Hi, everybody. Glad you're with us here today. There we go. We'll bring out some of this music a little bit. We're here tonight in the Evolution Center. I've wanted to spend some time with you, with all of you who are interested. Uh, we want to start an entire series that we're going to start here tonight called The Fundamentals, Lightworker Fundamentals. There are some very basic, important things that we as lightworkers have all discovered and found out that we actually are going to be giving away in this series as often as possible. And we're going to start tonight by working with a very important concept. We'll talk a little bit about it. We'll talk about uh, how where it comes from, what set of life lessons it works with, the interesting parts about spiritual psychology. But it's one of the challenging pieces that many people on this planet face. And it is the concept of being self-first. Now, we've got a lot of challenges with being self-first, especially someone who's working with a life lesson actually of definition themselves. Because if they're working with a life lesson of definition, number one, they have a very difficult time seeing themselves or being a part of that. So we're going to share with you some ideas tonight about how this works and about a different way that you can look at this. As always, everything offered by the group, Lightworker, Steve and Barbara, were offered for your own individual discernment. We are, we are building an empowered society. And that means that we ask that you not take everything that we say at face value, or at the, but to run them through your own filters and take the pieces that resonate with you. We'll do an entire session on the, the art of discernment. This will be one of the foundation blocks that we will build in this series. But tonight, we're going to be working with the concept of being self-first and selfish. Now, when most people grew up in their lives for and, and dealt with whatever they were going to be dealing with here, when most people started growing up, uh, we, we started working in a different area because we were taught literally not to be selfish. That was probably the most important piece here is that share your toys, share your food, do everything of that nature so that you're not selfish. So we become very much aware of the world outside of us instead of the world inside. And we become to look at ourselves from the outside in. This is where some of the biggest challenges come from. Uh, a friend of ours, many several years back, wrote a, a book, a beautiful book. Terry Cole Whitaker wrote a book. And uh, it, you didn't have to buy the book. You can get everything you need from the title. The title is What You Think of Me is None of My Business. Okay, wonderful concept, and yet, how do we apply that exactly in daily life? How do we put that in there? Uh, well, these are some things that we're going to be sharing with you tonight in this series. And this is part of what we want to share with you also is the idea of concepts of being self-first. Because the group says until we are self-first, we can't be the highest vibration that we're going to be. Until we actually start learning how energy flows in a natural direction and working with that instead of fighting against it because of our belief systems or because of some predetermined outcome that we believe we are attached to. Those are the things that get us off track all the time. The way to look at this is that energy has four basic cycles. We've talked about this in spiritual psychology. I'm only going to take one of them right now. All energy follows the path of least resistance. So, therefore, at the top of a mountain, if you have a river that is draining into that mountain, it will always find the way down to the path of least resistance. Even if there's two paths and they're equal, it will split out and go down both paths. If, they are, if one is just a slight bit more difficult, it, all of the energy will go down the, the first path. So, literally, that's one of the things we're going to look at. Because of that, and because of the way that we are wired for energy, what takes place quite often is that, that we end up working in a, in a totally different area than we thought we were, because now we become aware that our world is out here somewhere. And being out here creates the problems, of course, because that is, that is when we take ourselves out of ourselves and we become attached to an outside vision 
rather than looking at our spirit from within. So we're going we're gonna to work on this whole concept of be here now, about learning to find your divisions and so forth. But let's go back, first of all, to the very concept of being self-first versus selfish. Okay, here it's pretty easy to see the difference. We've got a, a, a lot of things that will come into play here, but we're here. Let me let me use a different camera here. This one's. Yeah, I love this little transition. That's always fun. Ah, there we go. <laughs> oh, we're going over here. <laughs> anyway, the 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 big difference here that we see is that in this transition, if you it, both of them appear to be the same at first glance. And here's why. If you are following the path of least resistance and the energy is following the path of least resistance, you are looking for the energy. You're looking to stand there. So when the energy comes in, because you need to receive energy, what happens is that a person who is selfish puts themselves right in the front of the energy flow in front of everybody else. And they have a tendency to gather the energy hoard the energy and cut everybody else off. So because of us not wanting to do that, we tend to go to the other extreme and say, well, don't ever put yourself first in the front of the energy flow. And the group says, if you don't learn to put yourself first in front of the energy flow, you cannot fill your own cup. And this is where a lot of people end up in trouble building small resentments for things over lifetimes or many years of a person's relationship. So this is part of the reason that we wanted to talk about this one here tonight, because it's a very important part of the base understanding of light in general, and especially of our teachings here at Lightworker. So what we're going to say is that even though they both look the same, let's now look at self first, because self first is very similar. It puts you in the front of the energy flow. The challenge is now what happens is if you dare to fill your own cup, you don't block other people because now you have more to share with other people. Now, here's an important concept that we have to keep in mind. Most of you are teachers or healers of some fashion. You have something that you have brought here to give to this world. And because of that, you've brought in a whole series of events and circumstances and contracts and everything to put you into that space. If you do not fill your cup, you cannot do that work. Because that work has to be done by a person who's very well balanced, who has what they need, who has all the process around it. So if you are constantly putting everyone else first, there will be a problem in your life. And it will show up most of the time as resentment to other people. The challenge is here because you've learned to do it. Now, especially those of you who have come in with the life lesson of definition. Definition is a very difficult life lesson. It's Barbara's primary life lesson. She's just done marvelous things with it. But nonetheless, it's, it's, it's one of the major primary life lessons. When you come in with that life lesson, you come in with an extra set of wiring anyway. And you are super sensitive. You feel everything from everybody. Now, a lot of you are shaking your heads right now going, yeah, that's me. Well, these rooms, these places, these you people that we call light workers, you people, I say that as if I'm not one. But light workers on the planet are filled with with people working with a life lesson of definition, especially women. And the reason is because not because of women, women it just happens to be our societies, right? At this point in time, life lesson of definition is more typically done with female than male, although I know a lot of males that are working with a life lesson of definition. I, I know a lot more females that are working with it. And that has to do with our society and the way that is right now. Because we're on the other side of the veil. We can choose either one when we're trying to facilitate something. So that doesn't really block us much. But when you choose a primary life lesson, and we'll do a whole series on the primary life lessons and the spiritual psychology that will be available through the Overlight system. But as we do that, you learn more about why you're super sensitive. And the other part is that you can mark this as the mark of a healer. Why? Because you do feel so much, you have the ability of going in. You have the ability of tapping into somebody's energy very, very quickly. Well, that's pretty magical. So that is the part that we really want to be working with as far as how we do this. And now, how do we hold that energy without it taking away from us? without us being drained all the time. You know, when I started to do sessions, I ran across a, 
I will simply call it a type of person because it's kind of difficult to generalize like that. But I, I had something that happened on a fairly regular basis, and I really didn't know what to do about it for the longest time because, like anything else, I was learning in the beginning. But every once in a while, I would get somebody on the phone because I always did phone sessions. And I would get somebody on the phone, we'd start talking, we'd communicate, and we'd finally get down to, you know, okay, I'll, I'll kind of put some pieces in order, and here's something they want you to know, and here's something they want you to know. And, and, and then we'd get down to it, okay, what is it you want me to cover? And they would say something to the nature of, you know, Steve, I, 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 my whole life's going to be just fine as long as my children are fine. Tell me about my children. Well, now I know I'm in trouble because my sessions are only going to go so deep into this. I can talk about their children. I have no problem doing that. I have no problem telling them. It's probably going to turn out quite a bit different than what they're expecting because they're really not asking me to tell about their children. What they're asking me is, did I do a good job? And are my children going to be safe? Because they are so invested outside of themselves that the only way that they can see themselves is through that process. That is a learned behavior on planet Earth. It served us very well down here when we were in survival mode, but now we're not in survival mode anymore, and a lot of these old energies need to go. Because what happens is we don't have the balance. We lose a lot of good teachers, a lot of good people, a lot of wonderful healers on this planet that wouldn't dream of doing that because they're so sensitive. What would that person think? Or they're so sensitive that they can't touch another human being without backfeeding and bringing some of the energy back into them. So we've seen a lot of people that have shut down on this point. So if your life is totally invested in other people, we're going to ask you to stop. We're going to ask you to reevaluate your whole life beginning with you and to start to fill your cup first, to start to actually take care of yourself and then look around you and have other people. Let me talk about the life lesson definition just for a moment. I'm not going to spend all night on it because I know this is for everyone, not just for people that have taken our courses. But the life lesson of definition simply means that we all have an energy field around our bodies. Here, maybe I can change cameras here and, and use a better shot to show you. Let's see. How about this one right here? Yeah, that'll be a good one there. So we all have this big energy field around our body, okay? And we know that. We, we do experiments all the time in the seminars. A lot of times we do exercises where you go up and feel the edge of somebody's energy field. And then we can do things, of course, to change that edge and to expand or contract the energy field accordingly and see how that works. So there's a lot of fun things we can do about it. Now, the challenge about this is that a person who's working with a life lesson of definition has a very strong and usually very large energy field but doesn't know where the boundaries are. And because of not having that boundaries, which is why we call it definition, because of not having boundaries, they bleed into everyone else's life. Now, that's usually not a problem for them. They can usually tell the difference. They go, oh, here comes somebody into my life for a minute. No problem, but, you know, what, whatever. Or you go the opposite end where you become so aware that you bleed into other people's lives that you stand back and don't do anything. And it keeps you from doing your work. And that's not why you're here. A lot of you are here as teachers and healers, and you're, you came with something. Or you have a specific contract to do something. But either way, unless you can take care of you, it's not going to happen. Because you're the only person that can do it. We've gone through fields of lack. On planet Earth, for the longest time, we believed in lack. We still do. Now, the problem with that is we are not lack. We are energy. We are completely abundant. But as long as we have these beliefs in lack, we have this problem. Here's what it looks like. Oh, I'm feeling your energy. If I'm taking your energy, that means you don't have that energy which I'm taking from you. We have a tendency to believe in these silly ways. But in reality, when you share energy or draw energy from someone... You know what happens to me if I take somebody's hand? It happens to me all the time. I love doing it. Uh, you take somebody's hand, and all of a sudden you feel like they're, they're just pulling energy off of you. It, it stimulates you to create more energy. It's an energy flow, and it actually helps. Many of you are going, oh, I don't know, I get drained right now. 
Well, you know, that's another issue that happens a lot when people cross certain lines, especially a person who does not know where their boundaries are. So what do you do about boundaries? What do you do about that? Well, what typically happens in a, per in a person who works with a life lesson of definition, they will have a tendency to draw in master manipulators. Oh, yeah. So especially, and you always have one at the beginning, which is the catalyst for the activation of the life lesson. Most of you are scratching your head right now going, gee, I wonder if you're talking about my mother. Well, you know, probably. Probably. Usually mom or dad or someone around you in, the, in your youth that can imprint you with that is your catalyst, and it's done by contract. You've asked them to catalyze and to activate your life lesson from the very beginning, so it would be a repetitive issue in your life. And that's all we're looking at here as far as life lessons, not an event that took place, but a repetitive series of behaviors that reoccur and reoccur. So if that is the case and you have always felt things, you probably were a fairly quiet child, even at age two, when you should have been screaming and tearing up and, and raising all kinds of hell. And, and the other things took place even from the very beginning of your life. You've learned to focus this energy inwards, and it's going to be very difficult for many of you to step into this next level without that energy. You know, a lot of people find this out. We, we, we have words for these things that we talk about, uh, and we explain them from a different way in spiritual psychology. The, the horrible thing that we have happen all the time in, in, on the male side of a family would, would be the, um, what do they call that, where the man just goes out crazy and he, he buys a sports car and he tries to think he's 20 when he's 50 and all these other things. So basically we have the whole rebirth. I'll think of the phrase in just a minute. And on the women's side, it usually happens at about the time that children move out of the house. Her whole life has been about building children, about being able to do that. We call that one the empty nest syndrome. And, and literally what takes place when they move out, the mother says, oh, my God, my, my whole life just moved out of my house. And, and now I, have to, I haven't developed other things. I haven't done other pieces. So what do I need to, to really do that? And these are the pieces that we're going to be working with that all of us have to work with. Now, please understand that even if this is not your life lesson, we all deal with all the life lessons all the time. The ones that we call your primary life lessons are literally the ones that have been with you probably since birth, repeating themselves in different relationships in different ways throughout your life. So those are the pieces. It doesn't make any difference for you to actually identify this as one of your life lessons or not. We're just trying to branch this out into some of the other materials so you'll see what spiritual psychology is like because this is what it is based on. And one of the most important pieces here are what happened in the past. How were you taught to deal with this? Well, most of you have a master manipulator even in your youth. Most of you had someone, it doesn't always have to be because it can be a positive catalyst, but we have a tendency to learn better from the negative ones. So and when we're setting up those contracts, if we really want to learn something, it's usually going to be a negative situation, at least in the beginning. So these are the pieces that we all have to come together with and find out how, how we work with this. In this particular situation, what we want to share with you is that we want to show you how it's happened in the past. Usually, let's just say mom was your catalyst, and mom was your first master manipulator, and she loved you very much, but she also pretty much made you do it. She, all of a sudden, you grow up, and you've got, to, you've got to learn a word that she never taught you. The word is no. And she definitely taught you never to say that word to her. She doesn't understand that. She'll just kind of skip over it, pretend she didn't hear it. You know, <laughs> whatever's going to happen here. Uh, but generally, that's the way, and, and she doesn't quite know how to comprehend that. So she'll turn around and try to pull it back. This is actually a normal way of behavior. Master manipulators are not bad people. It's just the way their life lesson interacts with yours. In fact, Barbara, I mentioned that this was Barbara's life lesson. I was definitely one of her master manipulators in her adult period as, as, as adults. So we have to learn how to deal with that differently. My life lesson was communication. When I started working on that, I was able to release all the manipulation. But it doesn't also mean that they're a bad person, too. Let me use an illustration. I'm holding a Kleenex box in my hand right now. 
Okay, it's just a Kleenex box, nothing magical. But what if I were holding a cloud in my hand? And I was talking about it as if a Kleenex. You know, if I ever need to blow my nose, I just pull this right out of here. And you know what your brain is is doing? Your brain is kind of moving up the edges of that cloud to make it look like a Kleenex box. And that is a natural thing that we will do. So the difference between a person who is clearly defined and a person who is not draws out the master manipulator in other people. And it's not a bad thing. That's the other piece to keep in mind. We're going to, we're going to lose this whole concept of good and bad. So it's not about being a difficult thing or a difficult piece. But this is the part that we want to start working with and, and help you to understand. So what does that mean? Well, for some of you, it means that you're going to have to stand up and say, Honey, I, I haven't been in love with you for ten years. Some of you, you're going to have to walk in one day and say, You know, this has been a great job, but I, I'm going to have to leave here. Because many of you have been putting yourself in so many other ways that you've attached yourself to other things. When you start putting yourself first, there is a change. Many times there is a vibrational jump. When you vibrationally jump, the only problem with that is that you've made most of your relationships down here and all of a sudden you're dealing up here. Uh, and again, not a problem, but you also have to keep in mind from the other person's point of view, it's your change. You're the one that made the fault. Okay, fine. But let's lose this whole guilt thing. Let's start releasing a lot of this guilt stuff because that is the most useless human emotion that we have on this planet. We served us fine during the caveman days and maybe even Neanderthal man, but it has been outdated and outused on this planet for a long time. So let's get our power back, each and every one of us. Let's get our confidence back. Let's get our opportunities to change and to do it. And you start by putting yourself first. Now, here's the other thing that we believe about lack. We believe that if we fill our cup, that means that somebody behind us doesn't have that energy to fill the cup. And that is not true with energy because energy builds as it goes. Many people get very exhausted and tired at the end of the day when you do your healing work or your healing sessions. I do. I, I get tired. I get physically tired, especially. Well, I don't present healing sessions, but I do seminars, especially if I've been standing or walking all day. But when I started doing the, the, the two-minute readings and when I started doing the telephone sessions and the things that I, that I worked with one-on-one -on -one with people, I started doing them differently because I found I could only do them two days a week. But not because they exhausted me. Quite the opposite. They charged me up. When people draw energy from me, it charges me. It makes me create more. It gives me an opportunity to create more energy. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Part of the reason also is that, that I'm not attached to the outcome. That took a lot of work. It, that's not easy. But you have to be not attached to the outcome. The moment you attach yourself to what did they think of my session or did I do right or maybe I should have said this, any of those things, when you take yourself out of the moment in those sessions, you're going to get drained because you're actually crossing a line of responsibility. It's not your responsibility to heal them. It's your responsibility to give them the best healing session that you can. It's your responsibility, if they choose, to allow you to create a space for them to heal themselves. That's what we're doing. So anyway, we'll get back to that one too. And I'm going to get too far off the course tonight because this is a very important piece that we wanted to be sure that you have. So a lot of people have difficulty with this. Now, grow up. Let's take this series of the of a young lady with her mother. Here, we don't need the the long shot anymore. I'll bring you over, bring you over here for a little bit, so you have some variety. Yeah. Oh, I gotta gotta make a quick correction here. But anyway, the the whole purpose of this working with the energy like this is so that we can start holding our own, so that we can start working with these pieces without having people draw our energy. If we have ample energy to give, that means that we're going to be on purpose, we're going to do what we came to do, and it means we can create our reality. It means we can have what we want for a change. 
How many of you have lived lifetimes after lifetimes for other people in your life or other purposes or things that you wanted to create? Well, that is now. That is what we're going to do. We're going to bring you back into the present. We want to put you here, stamp you here, let you work in this energy field here by putting yourself first at the front of the line. Now, what takes place with that? You fill your cup until you are completely without need. Then, then you have extra. The whole extra concept is very unfamiliar to many healers and many light workers on this planet. But if you don't have extra, you cannot help another person. You cannot do a lot of the things that you want to do. So we want to start thinking in other terms than we have been thinking anyway. Most of people will set a limit, they'll set an idea of what they need, and they will create about 80% of what they need. So let's start looking at what you're going to need to do your work. And let's also remove this whole concept of what are people going to think of me. Let's start figuring out what you need and the support that you need to do your work. And focus on more than that. Focus on extra so that your work can grow. Focus on extra in a lot of different areas so that you could spend a little bit on yourself or be happy in some of those areas. This is a very important part of being able to put yourself first. Barbara did this at a point where, well, actually at the time I was writing spiritual psychology. When I was writing spiritual psychology, both of us, her and I, were thrown into our life lessons. And it was like either evolve or get off the planet. I mean, it was just boom, right in our face, both of us. And I think that made us a lot stronger and everything else, but we both had to evolve in our own individual ways because we have different life lessons. So it was tough around the house, and it was very tough for the boys. Our boys were teenagers at the time, Austin and Brent. And they came to me one day, and I want to tell you about this because it was just so, it was wonderful. They came to me one day, and, and Austin said, uh, he says, Dad, uh, Mom's getting kind of selfish, isn't she, these days? And I go, well, um, yeah, uh, we've been working on some things, and, you know, she hasn't been taking care of herself. And, and, and they stopped me immediately, and they said, no, 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 no. They said, we like it. They said, we like it because she lets us go. She stops worrying about everything that we're doing, and we like it. We just wanted to make sure she was okay. Interesting. And me, right away, I mean, we had trouble around the house. We, of course we had trouble around the house. You've got three guys and one gal, and all of a sudden the three guys had to learn things like uh, what a clothes washer is and that you actually wash dishes after you eat. Uh, we actually had to learn how to cook food that you buy at a supermarket and take home and prepare. We didn't know any of those things up to that point because mom took care of everything. Well, all of a sudden, it looks like, hey, you know, we're going to distribute some of this work. And today, both my boys are really good cooks. Uh, especially Brent. Uh, and Austin has just gained so much from the whole thing. It's just uh, both of them kind of grew up a little bit on the slob side, and they are incredibly neat adults, uh, um, just very proud of, of how these boys have grown. And they're not boys anymore, but, you know, it's just a wonderful connection. But a lot of it stemmed from the fact that mom let go at that point. She stopped over-investing herself in their lives. The group says we do take responsibility for children, especially the physical bond, bond with mom. But they also say for most people, that's over with about seven years old. And most of us think that's like 26. So anyway, over-investing yourself is usually an attitude that comes along with being hypersensitive, which is what we're talking about here. It's people that are always out here looking inward. So we need to fill you up. We need to take care of you. Let you be at the front of the line. Let you drink from the, 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 the cup, the, the beautiful water, the energy coming down. Drink as much as you want. Don't worry about waste. Take care of your needs. Be happy first. Then you can give happiness to other people, including your children, including your relationships, your jobs, every other part of it. So these are the pieces at work. I'm also going to give you a little tool today, something that the group gave us very early on as they were channeling in the information for a life lesson of definition. It's a tool that we call the energy inventory, and it's fairly simple to do. 
First of all, you have to take everything that happens in your life and just call it a plus or a minus. Now, the hard part about the plus and minus theory is we don't want you to put any labels on plus is not good, minus is not bad. Any electrician knows that they use negative electrons more than they use positive electrons. In fact, the electrons, anyway, that, in electricity, positive energy and negative energy are not good and bad. It's only when we get into emotional energy that we call that. So let's remove that from the equation right now. No judgment. Positive, negative. Here's what happens. You have to simply assign a positive sign or a negative sign to every event that happens during your day. Here's what it looks like. Somebody calls you up on the phone. Oh, I've got phones here. I should probably grab <laughs> Anyway, somebody calls you up on the phone, and it's your daughter. Okay, your daughter, your daughter is 13 years old. She's been driving you nuts. She's out of the house. You thought she was gone for the day. And she says, Dad, can you, can you, can you take me and my friends to the, to the mall? Can, you know, we really want to go there. You haven't done that in a long time, Dad, you know. And, and she starts manipulating me because that's how we grew up. And because I love her and I let her and everything else, it's not my life lesson. But still, I, here's how the inventory works. You hang up the phone. And you said, oh, okay, honey, I'll come, I'll come and do it. All right. Because I'm not selfish. But I also give that a minus because that took energy from me that I was not expecting. All right. So you, the whole idea is to start labeling. Only use the labels. Don't worry about keeping track. Don't worry about writing them down. Don't do anything. Just assign every event a plus or a minus. All right. So my friend calls me up and, and, now she says, and I say, you know, I, I really got to, I really got to go. You know, I, I had an appointment with you, but I've now I've offered to take my daughter to the and her friends over to the uh, to to the mall. So anyway, I wanted to, just wanted to tell you, I'm not going to be able to make it. And she turns around and does something that makes you feel really good about yourself. Well, now that's a different situation. That's a plus. So even though it might have started out to be a negative, it's a plus. So you want to find out, did the energy leave or did the energy come back? And if you will simply identify that, it, it will no longer be possible for you to be manipulated by anybody. They will certainly try, and they'll certainly look at it. And you know what? They'll probably get by with it once. But the second time you assign a minus, you start being very aware of the patterns of you giving away your energy in certain situations. And even though you may choose to continue the pattern, it'll get more difficult and more difficult if you simply pay attention to the energy that's either coming in or leaving. And that's all you really need to do with it. You don't need to total it up or anything else. But if you go through three days of your life, just taking that energy inventory, you're going to find that you have a tremendous amount of opportunities to start learning a beautiful word that you probably never knew. Start learning how to say no Stop with smile on your heart, with smile in your heart and love on your face. Is that what it is? No, it's the other way around. With a smile on your face and love in your heart. <laughs> anyway, so and that's hard to do, you know. Now keep in mind also that when you're doing this. You're trying to learn the word no, but it's a word that's been stuck in your throat for a long time, probably since you were about three years old, when you were told, don't say that word. So you've been under this situation. When it finally starts coming out, you'd like it to come out like this. and It's probably going to come out like this. So you're probably going to end up yelling. It's probably going to be a thing. Be aware that as it starts to release, it's going to come out fast, harsh to other people. So go slow. That's the T. That's the idea. It's fine to take it, to go slow. And you know what will probably happen? Mom, in a few days, will come back to you and she'll say, what's wrong, honey? What's, what? Now you've got a perfect opportunity to say, you know, Mom, I love you, but I'm going to have to change my relationship with you here. I got, I'm learning things. I'm starting to do things. And I just can't keep doing things the way between us that we've been able to do. Now, this is her choice as to what she does. You are, should not be overly invested in her reaction. You know she's going to have a reaction. So let her react. Stand back. Let it blow past you. Don't take it on. It's not yours. This is going to be the manipulation that's going to come after this. And, of course, I'm talking about extreme cases. Many of you have positive catalysts. Some of, you will, some of your mothers will say, 
well, okay, well, you know, we'll, we'll work around it or something else. Uh, and, and what starts to take place is that you'll work with this on a different level. Now, let me give you another illustration of the same thing in a different set of circumstances. Let's talk about a woman now who's working with her father as the catalyst. And the father has literally cut her off completely. Or we can say it's a man that has the father. Man will not talk to his son at all. Uh, he hasn't talked to him for about 20 years because he said the no word. He basically said he wasn't going to do things the same anymore. And, of course, Dad took that as a personal attack, that something was wrong with him, and just completely made everything the fault. The man does not get to see much of his family now. He's been actually hurting over it for several years. And all of a sudden, he gets into a relationship, and his wife starts to manipulate, or his boss at work starts to manipulate. Let's use the boss because it's the same sex as the father. So let's say the boss really starts to manipulate, and all of a sudden, the man says, you know what, I just can't do it anymore. I just have to start changing my energy. And he stands up and says, you know, I, I just can't take this anymore. If I have to leave, I have to leave. And he leaves the job. He walks away. And he probably saves his life. He probably saved himself from a heart attack. He probably saved himself from something that was going to be very agonizing, trying to lower your vibration on a continual basis. doesn't work. Do it a couple of hours. You can do it maybe for a day. You work in that situation on a daily basis, eventually... You're going to have to change or the job will change you. So that's these are things that happen. Now he says it and he says to his boss, and let's say the boss calls him up and says, hey, you know, I, I never saw this side of you before. You know, do you ever think about running a division? You never know what's going to come out of these types of things because all of a sudden people start seeing who you are instead of who they expect this cloud to be. Now you're putting out an image. Now you're stating who you are and all with these boundaries, without, without walls. And that's another piece of it. Now what happens here, and I'll come back to that wall thing in just a minute. But what happens here is, because, if, especially if this is an energy stamp, it goes forward and backwards in the timeline. And all of a sudden, your father calls you up after not talking to you for 20 years. He just calls you up and goes, hey. How you doing? I haven't talked to you in a while. I just want to see how you are. Almost as if nothing had happened. And he'll call out of nowhere and kind of change the energy. Or if he's not used to calling you for many years, he won't call you. But he'll start thinking about you. And the next time that you call, you're going to have much more of an opportunity to change the energy and start setting the relationship on a higher harmonic. It's not about, it's not about the same level. Cause you may never be on the same level, but you want to hit harmonies on this levels of communication. That's what communication is all about. We'll talk about that at another communication like this. We've tried to give you some ideas here tonight. We know this is a very common problem amongst many people throughout the world, and especially light workers, especially healers and teachers on this planet. They're helping us to start shifting this energy. We hope we've been able to help you see this from a little different view. Oh, I did want to go back and tell you just the one thing about the walls. Because many people have parents who had much harsher times. Even one generation back at our stage of evolution was a huge difference in the way we did things. Whereas before that, the changes between generations were very minimal. Not much advancement was going on. So the last couple to three gener generations have made huge changes in direction and what has gone before them. So as a result, there's been a lot of other pieces. But also the typical reaction back here was to build walls when those things happen. When people's energy would, pe would drain you, you would build a wall and stop it from happening. The challenge you're going to have with that is if you build a wall, you block your own energy. Many of you have parents, maybe a mom or a dad, that built a wall, and along comes their kids, and all of a sudden they have to reach over the wall to go into your world. That is called manipulation. And that is a very common situation that happens in a life lesson of definition. So when you are working with this, and we can call this hypersensitivity, I'm not attached to the word definition, because many people don't believe in life lessons, it doesn't make any difference. We still have the same problems. Anyway, this was the whole idea of this, to give you a different view tonight and hopefully a little bit of courage for you to learn the most beautiful two-letter word we have on the language and to learn to say it in the most loving, beautiful way to be able to help you 
define yourself. This is part of the Lightworker Fundamental Series that we have, Fundamental Light, and we're very honored to be presenting this from the Evolution Center here at Lightworker. We're very happy that you've joined us here tonight. We will do more of these and make them available on a regular basis. Espavo. Thank you. 